Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I'm going to be talking about binary stars and specifically we're going to be discussing planets around these binary stars and the so-called uh, hypothesis known as stellar tidal evolution ejection of planets also known as steep. In other words we're going to be talking about how these planets right here don't actually stand much chance in binary systems. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> So this is actually based on uh, April 2018 presentation by David Fleming, uh, an astronomer from the US that basically uh, discussed the uh, new sort of theory that was um, analyzed using supercomputers that sort of determined one thing. And that thing is that when you have a binary system of two stars, kind of like what we saw in Star Wars in a sense you don't really uh, expect many planets to survive here for a long time. And they even came up with a pretty interesting theory explaining all of this. Now, we're, we're looking at Kepler-16 right now. Uh, this is a binary system that has two stars, one of them uh, somewhat similar to our sun, one of them is a little bit smaller, uh, a red dwarf, and a gas giant known as Kepler-16ab-b. This is an actual system uh, a few thousand light years away from our, our planet Earth. And this system has actually been discovered quite a few years ago. But for the longest time, we assume that many binary systems will have planets around them. And then we started learning a few things. And one of those things is that uh, these two stars, especially if they're orbiting around each other very closely, will actually exert so much unusual tidal effects on the nearby objects that um, first of all, they'll actually influence each other a lot. And second of all, they'll also influence the planets nearby. So here's what actually happens in the system over a period of millions and billions of years. These two stars will actually start eventually um, push on each other so much that they'll start moving away from each other. And uh, eventually they'll actually stabilize in a certain position where they'll have circular orbits and will be facing each other where there's no more tidal effects produced. But until that happens, they'll continuously pull and push on each other and move farther and farther apart. This will in turn cause the system to become a lot more unstable. And so as you'll see in a few minutes, this will cause planets in that system to basically, well, in this case, actually just get completely swallowed. Or in some other cases, well, let's build another planet here. In some other cases, these planets will actually end up getting thrown out of the system and basically, okay, this one, this one also got swallowed. Let's try this again. We can definitely, we can do it. We can definitely try to have it get completely thrown out of the system. Huh. Wow. This system is just loves swallowing planets, so I keep putting there. Well, I think at some point, at least one of these will basically get uh, tossed out of the system. Now, this is actually something they refer to as stellar tidal evolution ejection of planets. And it's, it's a theory that has been kind of uh, pretty well known, but it wasn't really proven um, using any supercomputers until recently. But this particular paper actually uh, does describe this in, in a lot of detail. And one interesting um, thing that they do mention in the paper is that, well, it turns out that um, there is actually an area around the binary systems where you can technically have a relatively stable uh, orbital parameters. In other words, you can definitely have planets that will not really get thrown out and uh, it will not essentially get swallowed, but that area does change with time as long as these two stars keep influencing each other. So, okay, in this case, wow, this is actually very unusual. This uh, planet actually changed its orbit and became basically attached to one of the stars here, but the other planet got thrown out completely. All right, let's actually take a look at another system that is present in uh, Universe Sandbox, and that's the system right here known as Kepler-47. 
This is a system that's about 5,000 light years away from us, discovered back in 2012. And uh, this is a, or was a really exciting system because we even found a planet that is in the habitable zone, Kepler 47 ABC. But it's also most likely a gas giant. Uh, but it, def it definitely might have a moon or two, and those moons might be habitable. But once again, same problem here. So even though this object is actually in a, what's known as a region of stability, in other words, it might not actually get thrown out for time being, these two stars, Kepler 47a and 47b, are actually not entirely stable yet. In other words, they might retrieve a little bit more, and I'll show you how this uh, looks in a few seconds. But by the way, this is um, the second planet here. And as you can see, it is a little bit hot. It has temperatures of about 100 to 200 degrees Celsius, but it is a rocky world. It's about 2.6 masses of our planet Earth. And all in all, the system actually kind of looks like this. This is a pretty interesting system to explore. Um, although I do believe there is actually there is actually a third planet in this system as well, although for some reason it's actually absent from this simulation. Uh, so we might as well just add it manually, which will also kind of show you, hopefully, how uh, unstable the system might actually become with time. So chances are that these stars will also separate from each other, and so their orbits will probably grow because of the tidal interactions. And this will expand the region of instability, which means that with time, even the planets that are present here will actually start uh, wobbling more and will most likely get ejected completely. And so the binary star systems might actually be responsible for producing quite a lot of these rogue planets that we've detected previously. And so a lot of the planets that we find without any stars might have actually come from uh, these binary systems like Kepler-47 and Kepler-16. And having run several simulations using supercomputers, uh, the team behind this paper uh, discovered that approximately 87 to possibly even 99% of all planets basically ended up getting completely tossed out of the system with time. In other words, if you run this long enough, if we run this for at least a few thousand or possibly even million uh, of years, eventually all of these planets that you see here will either get swallowed up or most likely just completely tossed out of the system, uh, creating basically just the binary stars with nothing else in the system and becoming rogue planets themselves. But what's interesting uh, is that they also discovered that um, just outside of this region of instability, there is actually an area where many, many planets seem to actually congregate. And they weren't really sure why this happens. In other words, right outside of the region of instability, where you can still have a relatively stable planets, you would actually find quite a lot of uh, planets just kind of hanging around there and basically orbiting, um, which is kind of unusual because uh, first of all, it's not clear how those planets were made and where they came from. And it's also unclear whether they came from the inside of the star system or if they came from uh, the outside and migrated closer. So there's still a lot of mysteries about these binary systems. And most importantly, there's definitely a lot of questions we still don't really know how to answer because uh, even supercomputers can't really simulate these these systems very well and uh, even today we're still not entirely certain whether we'll ever be able to find any kind of a habitable world around binary systems but according to david fleming and really according to most of the scientists that study binary stars we think that it's very very unlikely that we'll ever be able to find any kind of a stable environment in these uh, systems and that also suggests that any kind of a habitable planet or a planet that might be hospitable to human life or really to possibly any life is uh, very, very unlikely. So as you can see, in most cases, these planets basically get either eaten by the stars or get tossed out into the abyss like this planet right there. 
Well, that's all I wanted to say in this video and hopefully now you know a little bit more about binary systems and the so-called circumbinary planets. This uh, theory is definitely very interesting to uh, explore by yourself using Universe Sandbox. And uh, I actually invite you guys to try to create your own stable binary system and see if you can actually make it happen. Like for example, if you take a sun here and you place another binary sun around it, uh, making them orbit around one another. And then basically try to go ahead and place a planet somewhere in the system so that it's actually stable and you'll discover that it's actually not as easy as you think. As a matter of fact, uh, unless you really, really place it using some mathematical parameters where you actually know exactly where it will be stable, it's probably very likely that you'll end up just creating a system of chaos where everything just flies away and falls apart. If you do find out uh, an interesting way of doing this where everything is stable and everything stays in place, do post it in the comments below. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.